Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a little experiment or certain uh, something I'm going to start sharing possibly um, with you guys. Now, what I do with my students uh, that I work with over the years, what I've always done is I've always told them when my doors open if they need to bounce off ideas or whatnot, even after you know we finish working together. And one thing I've had happen is um, one of my students has contacted me and they wanted to bounce off some ideas. I've gone to university. They wanted to bounce off some ideas and um, work through some of the things that they're dealing with, maybe course related, maybe university related, maybe life related or whatnot, right? So um, we started Skyping. Uh, we decided to start Skyping uh, or hangouting or streaming, I guess. Uh, and uh, I asked them if it would be okay to share some of the discussion we're having. And the way I'm going about it is I've set up my headphones and, you know, I'm talking with this former student, student of mine that became a friend as well, right? And, uh, you know, we're basically streaming uh, or live chatting online, okay? And I'm listening to him and he's seeing me through my webcam and stuff and he's listening to me and we're having a little discussion. And I asked him if it was okay for us to record this. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut up these little segments of I guess advice or certain something we might be covering, maybe math related, economics related, whatever it may be. During discussion, I asked them if it was okay for us to record this, then if I could share this on my channel, because basically uh, the way it's gonna work is uh, whatever questions he has, and his, he's in his first year university, whatever questions he has, other people have as well. And whatever he's dealing with, other people are dealing with, right? One of the main things I, you know, I try to make my students really appreciate is that they're not alone. Whatever questions they have, other people have the same questions. Whatever problems they're dealing with, other people are dealing with the same problems. So whatever it is that's ailing you or you need help with is something that other people need that assistance with as well and I you know we talked about this a little bit and he he mentioned for sure you know if um, if it was going to help out other people he'd be 100% into it so we're sort of recording this right now and we sort of already recorded our little first session and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that little discussion I had with the student of mine I'm going to maybe cut it out I'm not 100% sure because what are we going to do I'm not going to use um, you know, if I've ended up using his real name or real locations, I'm going to try to edit, edit those out. So it might be the complete dis dis discussion that I'm going to upload, or it might be segments that we're going to upload. And you're only going to hear my voice. You're not going to hear their voice, okay? And if it's something, very specific question popping up, what I'm going to do is um, write out what the question was or what the topic of discussion was. But the odds are I'm just going to let the discussion just flow the way it is and you can just I guess hear it from my side what I'm saying and if that works out fine we'll stay with that format if not what I might do is also start recording uh, the full discussion and then maybe um, sharing that information the full discussion uh, their voice as well if they're okay with it if we think it's important and it's something that uh, uh, that people would get a benefit out of okay so for now what you're going to see is basically a discussion i just had uh, with one of my former students that's in first year of university and they wanted to touch base and figure out how they're going to deal with you know this progression into university and how they're going to deal with their courses and some of the some of the things they're encountering at uh, at university. Okay, uh, I hope uh, I hope it's a good format. I hope you appreciate. It. I hope uh, I hope it helps you out if you're also dealing with the same things as well. And um, and we'll take it from there. We'll see where it leads us. And if it's a format that uh, that works that you guys like, uh, we'll continue it. Okay, uh, that's it for now. I'll see you guys uh, shortly and in the next video. Bye for now.
Okay. So basically what I've set up here, take a look. Can you see this guy that I'm pointing to right now? Okay. The reason I got headphones on, I got this guy going on. I have a mic set up here. Okay. I told we do this. I'm going to record these sessions. If you're cool with it, if you're not, whatever. I, 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 I don't have to record because whatever we talk about, what you, one thing you have to appreciate is you're not the only one, right? Like you're, like whatever questions you have, whatever whatever ideas you want to bounce off me, whatever thoughts you want to bounce off me, whatever you want to talk about. There's tens of millions of other people just like you that have the same fucking questions just like me that I was your age had the same damn questions right okay because um, yeah and, and I think it's gonna help out other people because what I'm gonna do is basically take a look at this you know whatever we're talking about whatever we're recording if it's uh, if it's okay to load on YouTube what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut it up right and present the idea so other people have a chance to you know get a perspective on something that they're not gonna get it against <laughs> school right <laughs> like you're not gonna you know yeah it's uh, yeah and it, even if it was it doesn't make a difference man man when I was your age I wish there was like an internet like this, right? The only the only way we could get information was to download, right? And we were downloading at one time. I had like five computers downloading and uploading at the same time, right? Like there was no video streaming and shit. We just had torrents going or 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 peer to peer or Napster or whatever, just to get information, just to get podcasts, just to get lectures, talks, books, whatever we could get our hands on, right? Okay. So anyway, that, that done, as long as you're okay with it, we do this, yeah? Okay, man, whenever you want, you can stop. And I'm not gonna, when I'm gonna talk to you, I'm not gonna use your real, like, your name. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna, and if, it, and if I end up using it in the videos, I'm gonna, what do you call it, take out that part, do a little bleep out or whatever the hell it is, right? So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to, because I want this not only to be, uh, private anonymous to a certain degree i want the i don't want the information to be private i want the information to go out to anyone right i just want us to be private right you to be private to be to be whatever it is okay okay man. so how all that over with how's it going how's life yeah okay Yeah, but I mean, you're learning when you're working too. Like, don't 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 get the wrong idea. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to be. Perfect. That's you know what? That's the way. That's one thing a lot of people don't do. As soon as you're either in work or in school or wherever you are in. The personal relationships go through ups and downs and stuff but wherever you are where you're trying to work or learn or whatever it is if you find out or, or even training like people move around when they're physical trainers they change their trainers if they're competing professionally or if they're trying to improve right whenever you feel like you're becoming stagnant and you're not learning and you're caught in a loop and it's <laughs> repetition 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 and yeah, you're not growing, then it's time to change things up. You don't necessarily have to drop everything and move away or, you know, just tell everyone to fuck off, right? What you can do is slowly introduce things into your life that consume a little bit of your time and see if you like what, what it is, right? Okay, okay, good. This is your first year going to university, no? Okay. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah.
Okay. Yeah. So the Yeah, yeah. Man, what are you what are you guys doing in econ? Like what what are they teaching you? But what what are you guys talking about? Like, what's the what are they like in econ? Like, it's introductory econ, right? Yeah. And like, what are they talking about? Are you messaging with someone right now? <laughs> oh, you're looking at them like. <laughs> What is it? What is, what are you guys covering? Oh god. So these are so there's a little mathematics of what you're doing, right? Yeah. So Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, ba basically, econ is this, right? Let, let me give you general understanding, and I'm going to send you a link to a couple of articles I want you to read. Okay. So, uh, here, let me send you, let me, while I'm here, let me find these articles. Okay. Uh, where is it? Okay. In, uh, in terms of what? Uh, like taking all these courses, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Le you told me or Lisa told me. I think you told me when I saw you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You told me you were playing guitar and stuff. You picked it up. You loved it. Yeah, yeah. How's that? Good? Okay. Yeah. It comes naturally. It comes not. You love it. It's something you love. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like it's not like <laughs> like one thing. Less the one thing with our with our society, right? With our with our economic system, with our political system, with with the way our the whole thing structured, right? Words are defined in a certain way, which we think they're supposed to mean this, but in real life they really don't mean this, or they basically, they, words have been defined in a certain way where they narrow the meaning of that word to a level where it has no meaning. Like, it, it's, it, it's, it doesn't apply where it's supposed to apply. So for example, what you're talking about that this stuff when you're doing guitar and stuff, it comes naturally when you're when you're when you're studying this, it's just it doesn't feel like the word you're looking for, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. That's the word you're looking for, right? Because throughout our life, all the way, you know, graduating, even if you start working, people associate work with something you do for money. Yeah. Right? That's not really, that's, that's bullshit, right? Like, if you love doing something that you're doing, okay, 
you might be doing, spending a lot of time, spending a lot of energy, spending a lot of money to learn what you need to do to, to excel in whatever you want to excel. If it's guitar, it's guitar. If it's this, it's this. If it's this, it's this. It doesn't make a difference. Everybody has something, right? Now, according to the traditional definition of work, people will come up to you, well, what do you do for work, right? Or what are you working on, right? Usually, they're defining that to mean something that you're struggling with or it's, it's, a, it's a chore. Work doesn't have to be chore. You could put a lot of work into something you love and it doesn't feel like it's taking away anything from you. It's giving something back, right? So what you're doing with your guitar and stuff is giving something back to you, right? It's perfect, right? You have to make sure you have those kinds of things in your life, okay? However, everybody, I don't care who you are, you're going to have things that you need to do that you may not really want to do, <laughs> right? Like, pardon me? Otherwise, how are the good things supposed to be good? And it's something that, you know, it's, it's part of the game, man. Like, when it's a struggle. Like, life is not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, it wouldn't be fun. How many easy games do you play now? Like, really, when you're, when you're playing guitar, do you sit there and play the same damn chord all the time that you know how to do? No, of course not. You're trying to learn new, new things, right? That's a struggle, right? Education, life is not supposed to be an easy ride. It's not supposed to be simple. It's, it's, not, it, it's not supposed to be any of that. It's not supposed to be happy all the time. People say, I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I turn to them and go, you're an idiot. Because only, only completely, um, you know, I'm not going to be politically correct. Only completely retarded people are happy all the time. That is insane. You have to be insane to be happy all the time. I'm sorry, right? You're going to go through ups. You're going to go through downs, right? Now, by the way, if I get a little intense every now and then, let me know. But, but with you, yeah, with, with you, yeah, with you, I'm very personal. And in general, when I, with my students, and it's not just with you, with my students, and I, by the way, you're not the only one. Whenever I've worked with people, I've told them, my door is always open. Later on in life, university life, whenever you want, you get in touch with me. And... Uh, We'll shoot the shit. <laughs> okay. Now, the one thing, one, th one thing I was leading to when it comes to the uh, uh, this work stuff, right? Let me let me give you one of the secrets to life, really. Okay. One of the secrets that's gonna make you. And by the way, I'm gonna like some of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about. I am planning on making like other videos on so I'm sort of giving you content information that I'm creating or I'm going to be creating and stuff like this right just to give you a lowdown right but one of the things one of the main tricks to making sure in your life you fill your life full of things you love to do right it doesn't mean they're going to be easy they may be a struggle it may it may take a lot of work right but one of the tricks to filling your life full of things that you love to do, right, is to do the things that you hate to do first. Really? I'm not, I'm, like, I'm not kidding, man, right? It's, it's basically the same concept of procrastination, but pro procrastination is so general. Procrastination, people don't procrastinate about things they love to do, right? People procrastinate against things they really don't like to do, okay? But... I think the be better way to think about it is do the things you don't like to do first. That way, what's going to happen is there's going to be less things you have on your plate that you need to do that you don't like and more of the things you like to do, right? Because one thing that happens when people procrastinate or just, you know, I used to do this too. I used to procrastinate a lot, okay? Like really, everybody does. When you're younger, you procrastinate, right? Because one of the reasons maybe because you, you uh, maybe you have you think you have a lot of time on your hands right and as you get older to a certain degree you don't procrastinate as much right yeah. like seriously you don't like I I don't know when I stopped procrastinating but 
I, I do still procrastinate a little bit on the little those little annoying things that I really don't want to do that just hang around, right? That just like, it's like, oh, finally you bite the bullet. Say, okay, man, I got to take care of this damn thing. And then you do it. It takes like 10 minutes. You're like, man, what, this weight that was carrying on me for like weeks or months that I didn't want to do this thing. And it took like 10 minutes or it took half a day, four days, whatever it is, right? All of a sudden it's lifted. Now you're like, oh God, I can breathe. I can do this. I can do this, right? So just keep this in mind. I don't expect you to do it. Like really, no one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with me, man. Same with me. If anything. Yeah. If you got something that's bugging you, there's no way you're going to do really well in something you're trying to focus on, to do well on, right? So just look, it's I'm sorry, but uh, by the way, the, for you it's going to be a lot harder it to do than for me right because me I started doing this a long time ago so I got a lot of the crap that I needed to get done out of the way right so there's no backlog and all the things that were being built up for me to do that I've been procrastinating to do for years you man because because you just came out of not just uh, you've been out of high school how many years a couple of years now So you just went, so you, when did you start school? Oh, wow. So, and you started in uh, September or January? Okay, so you took, whatever, eight months off. Not even. Yeah, 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 it's whatever, six months off, okay? So you've gone straight to university. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, look, coming out of high school, everybody coming out of high school is messed up. Uh, private is the same, uh, public school, private school, it's the same crap. It's the same crap, okay? Just different color. <laughs> no, it's not even professional. It, it's the same garbage, man. It's the same garbage. Professional, yeah, professional. <laughs> All right? So, look, that's one thing you have to appreciate, okay? Right now, you're coming out of a situation that has played with your emotions, filled you full of garbage, made you, made you question who you are, right? Like before you start school, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Privacy. Like, so oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, no, you shouldn't. You sh look. You sh you shouldn't have anxiety about it. <laughs> look, I I have a I have a friend that basically a few years ago, right? We we're talking and stuff like this. I said, no, man, this is not going to work. He goes, look, I'm going to use my name. He goes, he goes, Chicho, listen, <laughs> shit sells, right? Yeah. Now. That's only happening or has been happening because there hasn't been 
in open form of communication for decades, okay, you're just coming in to, like, you're sort of the first wave of transition of basically the internet really kicking into high gear with sharing of information and stuff like this. You're just you're not supposed to keep up with it all. No, you're not supposed to keep up with it all. No, you shouldn't have those social apps. Those are distractions, man. No, no, but no, but you have one thing you have to understand. You're saying every single person that's in the cafeteria, every single person that's in the hallway, every single person that's on the bus, you know, when I get hop on the bus, there's tons of people just their heads down. But it's not every single person, right? Don't focus on the ones that are doing things that you don't like. Like it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad things that they're doing. It's just things that bug you or things that you don't like. Yeah, don't let it piss you off. But that's what you're going through right now is the natural progression of being let out of a very bad situation. You, you came out of, look, you got to appreciate, you're, you just been let out of jail. Really. And you didn't know you were in jail. You, you didn't know you were being played with. You realized, it, kids in high school, basically towards the elementary, towards the end of elementary school, and when they go to high school, they start to realize, they start to question, why am I here? hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. You didn't feel uh, the, the reason you could able you were able to handle it is because you didn't feel bad. Okay, so you so you saw you you saw through the curtain, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Basically, it means you figured out their bullshit and you called them on it, right? So. I, I, but it's it's not look it's not it's it's not a point of <laughs> but that that's the thing right yeah but one thing you have to appreciate now is you gotta now that you figured you have by the way I'm gonna let you this let you know you know I'm gonna I'm gonna burn you know rustle your feathers burn your you know uh, do certain things that may piss you off but right now. A year ago, whenever you all of a sudden figured out that something, the gears weren't grinding and all of a sudden went click, oh, wait a second, this is BS. Oh, I have to regurgitate their BS to be able to, to, be able to get the marks that I need to be able to pass this course or pass the high school to get this piece of paper that they, they can give me so I can continue on to where I really want to go, right? So you figured out that it's just... Uh, an obstacle full of BS they put in front of you that you have to go through or jump through or jump over or whatever you want to think to be able to progress in your life, right? And you having to do that piss you off, right? Yeah. I, no kidding. I, I, don't, I don't blame you, but I can honestly tell you this. Don't let it get you so angry that it's going to prevent you from progressing to wherever it is that you envision or you want to go or even if you don't know where you want to go you're going blindly forward if you want to go in that direction and the system is putting up obstacles in front of you saying hey you have to go through this before you can go this way now you got two choices you can 
try to bring down the wall, which I don't suggest. Not until at least you're on the other side of it so you can see what the hell is holding it up, right? If you're hitting a wall, you, you don't know what's... <laughs> like, don't try to break the wall. Don't try to go through the wall, right? You can either turn around and go in a different direction if you don't want to go that way anymore. If you think this obstacle is too heavy, right? Or you don't want to deal with it. It doesn't even have to be too heavy. You don't want to deal with it. You just say, oh, the hell with it. It's not worth the, it's not worth the effort. Or you decide to run through the hoops, jump over the wall or go around the wall and look back, see if you want to deal with this wall to make it easier for other people to come through. Maybe you want to work towards breaking down this wall because you got a friend over here that wants to go through the wall, right? And they can't go through, you got to help them, help them through, right? Which is one of the things, one of the things you have to appreciate right now, right? We're going through the age of competition, which is what our school system is set up on to the age of collaboration, okay? So one thing you have to learn, which the school system really hasn't taught you, it hasn't really taught, it's taught very few people, most people don't learn it, right? You, it's not about com competing anymore, right? It's about collaborating, helping other people to come along with you if you can, but you can't help everyone, right? Because what happens is there's going to be, because as soon as, you know, if you, if you and a bunch of friends are able to go through this wall, through this obstacle, then the next obstacle you hit, then one of your friends might be the one that can figure out a way to go through this obstacle easier than you. Right? Like you said, there's so much going on right now. There's so much going on right now. It's very difficult to be able to absorb it all. To be able to deal with it all right really it's very difficult i can't do it personally i one of the reasons i i do what i do is because i learn from doing what i do like really i'm not kidding you like the, the, there's multiple reasons but uh like even that's one thing i figured out when i was going to university one thing i figured out about in year three third or fourth year university we did, I did a little bit of it in uh, second year university, but I stayed to, basically coming out of high school, I was in your state to a certain degree, I was pretty pissed, right? Because it was garbage. And then I went to my first university, right? And I went to that university and I no, looked around me and everybody was a kid, like not age-wise, but they were, they were doing things that I might have done in grade eight or nine. So I was looking around me and sitting in the classroom and people were doing things that we were doing in high school. I'm like, man, this is university? <laughs> I thought I was done with that crap, right? Which is some, something you're saying. You're going to cafeteria, you're seeing people on their cell phones and all this jazz. This is just, the whole, yeah, the whole structure is, look, I, I'm not going to defend our education system. I'm not going to defend the university education system and all this jazz, right? However, there is information there worth having, right? And it's up to you what, you know, you're going to have to figure out for yourself what it is, what, what that information is that is relevant to you and you, how you're going to deal with it, okay? And how you're going to manage, if you're going to stay at university for a while, how you're going to manage your curriculum, your school, your personal life, your, your relationships to be able to learn what you need to learn to be able to take the next course that you really want to take, right? So what you should be doing right now at university is not just focusing on what you're taking right now, is look ahead to see what type of courses are being offered in second year university, third year, fourth year. Take a look at what possible career, you know, I'm calling it career because that's what they, people call it, right? But where you wanna go, where you wanna put your time and energy, if you wanna go into, you know, to work in a company, if you wanna start collaborating with people to create your own whatever it is you want to create, if you want to go travel, if you want to go to grad school, if you want to start your own business, have some kind of depth to your experience at university, okay? 
Do, do, do you appreciate what I'm saying? Ha ha. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna take time, like, dude. It's gonna take time. It like don't be like one thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you're, you're right. Sometimes you have to step back, man. Sometimes if you're taking something, you have to sort of go, oh, you know what? I stepped a little too far. I got burned. So take a step back and rethink, reorganize yourself. Like my, for me, I failed my first year calculus. Like really, I tried to cram and I failed. I got like 34%, right? I bombed it <laughs> because I didn't really put any effort. My first year English, I went to, I went to class, and it was boring. Like it was ridiculous. It seriously, it felt like I was in grade eight, doing English with this some dude. That was <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous, right? So I, you know, I took the hit and you know failed that course, failed the math, right? It didn't mean I sort of said the hell with everything, right? I reorganized, rethought things, took a little time off, and then went back and redid things, right? When, when I was mature enough to deal with what was happening, right? It has to, and it, you know, some of the stuff happened when I got less angry, right? Some of the stuff happened because I had a lot of stuff, uh, you know, progression for me. You know, it's, it's about progression when you're not stuck in a rut, right? Some of that stuff happens, you can get out of that rut by doing things that you've been procrastinating on, that's been building up, right? If there's a lot of things on your plate that you, again, it goes back to the thing, do the things you don't want to do first. That way, the majority of things left in your life to do are things that you really want to do, right? And then when that cue is done with, when you dealt with all the back, you know, the backlog of all the crap that you have been piling up that you needed to deal with, you haven't dealt with. Once you get rid of that backlog and you're filled with basically almost everything in your life that you really want to do, and then when something comes up that you really don't want to do, do it right away, right? Because you've already dealt with the backlog. Don't let it pile up on you. Do it right away, and then you don't have anything that you really don't want to do. Everything left is what you would love to do, right? And then something comes along that you really don't like to do, you hate it, and then do, do it right away, psh, that's gone, and then, oh, wow, my life is full of things I love to do, right? And then something else is going to, oh, I don't want to do, do it, done, right? That's the way it works. Yeah, yeah, how's that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Here's here's one thing you're gonna have to manage your university. Okay. This is one thing you're gonna have to manage your university. It's efficiency. It's your effort. Okay. Let me give you an example. I had. I had, uh, in the last five years or so, these are the two students that I've had that I, can, I use in this example, right? I had two students that went to private school in Vancouver, right? And expensive private school, okay? Both of them were sitting in the 96% average, 96, 98% average, right? 
So they got accepted into the universities they wanted to get accepted into, right? They got accepted into multiple universities. And they both went to the university they wanted to go to, right? Both of them failed out within two months. Okay. Both of them had a nervous breakdown. Okay. Do you know why? This is, this is the reason why. <laughs> yeah, because for sure. Yeah, you're, you're done for, right? That's one of the reasons. Because it was a private school. They were given the marks, right? Because they, there's a whole system behind the private school sis, education system where they give marks so people can go get into university and they say, oh, a higher percent of our students go to university, so parents pay a lot of money to get their kids to go through the whole cycle. But the main reason that these two students bombed out right within two months was because they hadn't learned how to manage their time they would they would put five hours of work in high school five hours of work into something that they should have put in 20 minutes of work right they were trying to get a hundred percent in everything they did right now you don't have to do that if you're at university now anymore right because you're in Supposedly, the reason people do that in high school is to get the marks they need to do to get to university, right? But now that you're in university, you don't have to do that, right? So when they give you a project that you're not really that interested in, if you're not really, if you don't care about, especially in first year, first year, second year, third year, fourth year sort of matters because fourth year you do want to go, if you want to progress going to grad school or whatever it is, you do need to get high marks, right? You need, do need to play the system a little bit, play the game a little bit, and you know, cozy up to professors and see if they'll take you in as a grad student, and, you know, do the extra stuff. So it, you know, there's a little element of the system creeping in, right, in, gra uh, in fourth year, fifth year university before you go to grad school, right? But first year university, the one thing you have to appreciate is you're free, right? You don't need to get 80%, 90%, 70%, you just need to maybe, if, if it's worth the effort, pass the course, right? You just need to pass enough courses to make sure they don't kick you out of university, right? Because there's no way right now that you know what you really love to do for a long time. You're sampling, like you're sampling. You just got out of jail. They open the doors, and you got all these options available to you and you can go play around and you really there's no one sitting there phoning your parents saying oh he wasn't in class they don't care like you already paid them their money right they got paid they don't care if you're gonna show up or not less work for them right they really don't care which is good and bad at the same time right use that opportunity to sample use that opportunity to learn efficiency Okay, so if you get a project in this course that you like taking, and it, it, there's like this dance course that you're taking, you love it, but it's overwhelming you, right? Like with the amount of work you need to do. So, so manage the time, man. Manage the time. Work really hard on the projects that you really want. You're getting the most out of, and the projects you're not getting, you know, you're not appreciating as much, put less effort and be okay with a lower mark or just getting a pass on that and getting an 80% on the other one, right? If they're doing percentages, I don't know. If you need to do a project to pass the course, do that project. Like, don't do any projects that you need to do, you know, don't, don't skip any projects that you need to do to pass the course. Okay, who do, who do you have in mind? What are you going to do? Interview a dancer in the, last, in the next week, right? Okay, what have you done so far? Okay, go walk downtown. Okay, if you see someone doing some kind of street performance that involves a dance and say, hey, can I talk to you?
Like, don't, it doesn't have to be, it could be someone that you've, like, do you know anyone that, have you gone to any shows, any electronic shows, any, any, any bands, any music events with any friends? Do you know any friends that love dancing? They don't have to be a dancer. They just like, maybe they just like how to dance. Are they have to be, are they supposed to be professional dancers? What do you mean? What do you mean? Look, can you ask? Can you ask someone that's a street performer? Yeah. Okay. So, what are you supposed to ask him? What's what's the interview request? Like, what are you supposed to find out? What? What do you mean? It just says interview a dancer? It just what are the seven And you're supposed to come up with the questions. Have you done any research into this? So go online, go on go online and just type in interviews with dancers. Find out like take two questions from one video, two questions from another video, three questions from another video, you got your seven questions. Sit down and ask one of your friends, hey, what you're like on your paper, when if when you're submitting in your work, you can make this BS, you can make up. You're a dancer, you like dancing. Ask yourself the same questions. On your paper, if they you know, if you're supposed to say who you interviewed, you could just say anonymous. The person I interviewed doesn't want to be known. Like, look, you're in an education system, right, that is using words that you think have certain meanings. They're, they're teaching you in a certain way which you think is supposed to be this way, but it's open. It's a system. You can take out bricks. You can, you can play with it. You can manipulate it. Okay, the interview question doesn't. You don't. You could just sit down in your room. And interview yourself. Like. So far, what you, so far what you've told me. <laughs> Why not? Like if, if you like here, have you, have you, I know you've gone to my site, right? Yeah. yeah. You've checked out the videos on math and whatnot, right? Have you checked out the videos, the first, the second set of, the first set of videos I load on, loaded on my channel, right? They were, I went to a Tai Chi celebration expert, like martial arts. And I was, it was my first time. So I videotaped that and I edited it and loaded up. The second time I put out a bunch of videos, right was i went to an electronic music event and for i stayed away for like 30 hours right i had just bought a camera and i did what i what i like doing at electronic outdoor music festivals like it was a weekend festival but i only stayed like 30 40 i don't know whatever hours i stayed awake throughout the whole thing and i, I and and what i did I took my little camera that I just bought, right? It was on Vancouver Island. I read the instructions on the ferry, right? How to work this thing. I bought a, it was little mini DV tapes, right? And I went to this festival and I brought the camera and I started recording, videotaping, right? And basically what I videotaped was DJs playing music and people dancing to it. Have you looked at those dancing videos? Okay. <laughs> I think you'll like it because you're talking about dancing a lot. Basically, for me, I love dancing, right? Like, seriously, I, I could do for hours, right? Okay. So one thing I, I tried to capture in those things was how people danced, right? And it was, it, and it, everybody's different and it's beautiful and it's intense and it's, 
it's magical. It, the body, the mind, you can, you can see if, if it, they're just going through the motion, if their whole being is dancing, moving. If they're moving with the terrain, if they're doing whatever with the music, if, if, they're, if the DJ and the, and the dancers are bouncing off each other, like if it's magic, or, or, or musicians, right? Sometimes you catch performances where the people playing the music and the people enjoying the music with the dance, they're in sync. Like they're pumping each other. Like it's magic. It's incredible, right? Yeah. I just brought that up. I just brought that up because you're talking about dancing a lot. So those, those videos are, there's a lot of dancing going on there. <laughs> How do you stay up for 30 hours? I don't know, man. You just do. <laughs> That's funny, that's funny. Awesome, awesome. Good, good. Uh, so what do you got planned for today? What do you got planned for today? Oh, nice, nice. How's sociology? Good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that one hasn't started yet. No, but you can, uh, if you're on a wait list, you can still go to the class and sit down and listen. As long as it's a big class. If it's a small class, you should approach the professor and say, hey, can I proctor your class? I'm on a wait list. Can I just sit in your class and listen? How many classes have you missed? You missed three classes. Oh, four classes already. That's a lot of university. So you got some serious catching up to do. Yeah. So how many classes are you taking right now? Four? Four classes. So you're doing okay. You're enjoying three. You're not enjoying one, the econ. Okay. Okay. Okay, think about it. Because you need minimum uh, three, three classes to be considered per, uh, full time, right? Okay, okay. Um, okay. Have you got the. Uh, what program are you in, by the way? Okay, sweet, sweet. Um, okay, one thing about, I mean, right now you're first year, so you're just managing, you know, you're managing things. You're, you're just, um, you're getting your footing. You're just like, it's like going out to sea, right? You don't have your sailor, sailor's footing right now, right? Sea footing or what, what do they call it, right? So uh, you, you, need, you need to be able to do that first. Um, so do that with whatever courses, whatever credits, you think you're gonna need to be able to do that with right but once you get your footing once you get your sea legs right um, really challenge yourself at university you're gonna see a lot of your peers at university that that are in certain programs and when it comes to electives whatever choices they have whatever their program they're in they take the easiest classes they can take so their workload is the least right that's not the best idea <laughs> okay them huh oh you sent me something i was actually looking to send you something uh, here while i find this i'm gonna i'm gonna send you a link okay if you're taking econ you must read this Okay, hold on, let me close this guy. Exit. Going. Uh, okay, I'm going to send you an article. Okay. Here, where's the messages? Doink. Tap in the message. Okay, open this link that I just sent you.
It's called it's called shelling out the origins the origins of money by Nick Zabo. Okay, do you see it? Okay. It's a long read. Before you take any type of economics course, you need to read this. Okay? Like it's a must because it basically explains to you what money is. Okay? And one thing you're going to find out with anybody in um, economics, anybody you, most people you talk to, you ask them what money is, they won't really know what money is. Okay, really read this article. It's a long article. It's well worth reading. It'll give you a crazy perspective on our current economic system, how society has formed, how we function, how business is, how politics is, how resources are managed, how everything is important article must read okay here's another article I'm sending you it's called behind the curtain the full Monty okay and it's about Wall Street okay how Wall Street functions and what liquidity means and stuff like this okay now this stuff is not going to be things you're going to talk about in this course that you're taking right now okay but this should be. This should be the beginning. This should be the introduction to any economics course. Okay. Pardon me? Uh, the full Monty or the shelling out? The full, the full Monty is longer. Read shelling out the origins of money first. It goes into, it goes into human history right our, our evolution as a society so it's not just economics it's the core the core of it is economics but it's a really about uh, our society okay our civilization okay now I'm on your site that you sent me I can't so you're in the chapter which is the classical the classical marketplace uh, hold on a second Oh, dude, the article I sent you, the first one, this is what you would need to read. So the table of contents for where you are, the chapter you're in, is the classical marketplace, demand and supply. Is that correct? It, it, I'm just reading chapter three. The classical marketplace, demand and supply. Correct? Uh, so 3.1 is the marketplace trading. 3.2 is the markets building blocks. 3.3 is demand and supply curves. Okay, now, for chapter 3, what we just read, where you are, that article that I sent you, that's what you need to read. Okay, read that article, because it talks about, basically, the marketplace, it talks about demand and supply, okay, it talks about trading, okay, the introductory part of it anyway, non-price inflation. Now, what you're taking is going to have a little bit of mathematics in it as well okay like and the equations the way it works with economics what they've done is uh, there's a lot of hocus pocus in it what they're teaching but that's the system that's in, been in play for decades and there's models that they use and stuff like this and one thing with economics is I forget what the number one rule is when they say when you're learning economics when you go in there is um, I think one of the first things they say is we're going to assume these models are true, right? Or the models that we're going to be using. So the variables that you're, you know, the equations that they give you, all you're really doing is finding the variables and just plugging in a quantified value, a number associated with that variable and doing calculations and coming up with another number, which is really quantifying whatever the word is you're talking about whatever the terminology is you're talking about, right? Uh, if, it's a, if it's a good investment, you know, if something is a good investment, you know, the simplest method you could do is, you know, have a little mathematical equation. You punch in all your variables, whatever you understand, whatever you think, and you get a number. And if that number is above one, it's a good investment. If it's below one, it's not a good investment. And the further it is above one, it's a better investment. And the, third or the further it is below one, it's a 
worse investment. Like that's the simplest version you can think about this, right? So that's, that's what your basic introductory economics is. They're going to give you a whole bunch of numbers and then you look at those numbers, you graph those numbers, you look at charts and all that jazz. I'm not sure exactly what it is you're looking at because you don't know what it is you're looking at. You haven't gone through it yet, right? So you sort of have to take a look at each little model separately, okay? And try to understand it. The, the key with understanding economics is learning the system that they're teaching you is to learn the terminology. Just like any system, you gotta learn, you gotta learn the language, right? So have you spent any time learning this language? Did you take uh, econ in high school? Are you going to continue with this econ course? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got some serious catching up to do. Okay. First order of business, you want to you want to do this thing. Uh, don't read anything from your econ course yet. Read that article I sent you, not the sixty-page one. Uh, but uh, The Origin of Money by Nick Zabo. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but what you need to do is look at that stuff yourself first. And then narrow it down and figure out what we need to learn first before you can progress to the next one, right? Because I got a pretty good idea of what you guys are doing now. Like just looking at that, the table of, the table of contents, yeah, on the book. I got a pretty good idea of what you guys are doing. I don't know it all, I, I really, I've looked at the stuff in the past and I looked at it a little bit recently and I, for me, economics is, oh, what do I need to do? As long as you know the mathematics, right? As long as, because in a simple math, like economics is, it's just simple math, right? So all you need to do is know the math and then whatever you're trying to understand, go to the beginning of the chapter and start reading it. Learn the words, what they mean, right? There, there's terminology there you need to learn, right? Like for, for me, a lot of the economics I do, when I come across words, if I, re, if I you know, if I got a general idea of what it means, then I read it and I continue. If I really need to understand what that word means, that word usually is associated with a ratio, right? Almost everything that you're gonna look at in terms of words, what they mean, not almost, at the beginning stages anyway, what you're gonna learn, they're basically ratios, which is basically meaning they're fractions, okay? So you have to appreciate, because economics, uh, you know, I'll send you more stuff regarding economics, but one thing you have to appreciate about economics, economics is all relative. There's no absolute economics. Uh, there, there's no absoluteness to our economic system. Everything's relative, right? So for example, when you say, if, you, if something is a good deal, a good deal relative to what? Do you follow what I'm saying? Everything is relative. Basically, our current economic system is based, you know, our education system sort of mimics our current economics. It's, it's all sort of a, it's, it's all together, right? It's all sort of a, in our civilization, right? Is it going to progress the same way? I don't know. I don't think so. I think there's different models coming up, different systems coming up. There's different terminology coming up right, uh, that is challenging, that is going to be incorporated into our economic system, it's going to change our current economic system, right, so this is all sort of fluctuating, right, so for you to really appreciate it, you have to understand the language, you have to understand what those words mean, and a lot of the words that you need to understand, they're associated with ratios in economics, where something is relative to another thing, this relative to this, this relative to this, okay? Um, 
you know, that's the best general thing I can give you right now, just to open up, you know, open up your mind to the information coming in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, read that article today, and if you really like it, and if you're thinking, let, let it simmer a little bit. Let it, you know, think about it for a bit, right? And then read the other article, The Full Monty. Okay, because that article and those two articles go together. They go hand in hand. Okay, uh, because the money one, the origin of money is talking about human evolution. And the full Monty is talking about how our current economic system is set up, specifically Wall Street related. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, by the way, you're going to end up having to read a lot at university. A lot more than you did at high school. Like, dude, either did I. I didn't even read a single, I didn't even read, finish a single textbook they gave us. And I, I just had, I read a little bit just to get the idea. I got Cole's notes just to do whatever. And I got friends to, sometimes I would sit there just before a test. I'd say, oh, what's, what's this book about? I don't know. Like, give me the general just to be able to pass the, pass the test, right? Right? Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't recommend doing that because it sort of put me in a jam when I got to university because I was a, I am still a very slow reader, but y you're gonna have to read a lot. Now, one, one thing, one tool that, uh, have you tried a text-to-speech reader? Do you know what it is? Yeah, yeah, so for example, here, I, I use text to speech readers a lot and I use uh, and I've uh, yeah you can download free ones or if you have a new computer it probably has one so for example here let me let me uh, here let me highlight something uh, that'll here my text to speech reader uh, you're gonna hear it okay I'm gonna get it to read it to you you just highlight things that read Perfect. Yep, that's exactly what you want. Okay? So, if you're finding certain things, it's best to read yourself, right? Because you need to take notes and stuff. Certain fluff, uh, not necessarily fluff, I've read pretty intense articles using text-to-speech readers, right? But when you find out that your eyes are getting tired, and at university, your eyes will get tired, if you're not your eyes aren't getting tired, you're not doing it right, you're not consuming enough information, because right now you're in a state where you're supposed to be learning as much as you can, as, f as fast as you can, and, pr and taking little breaks and processing the information, okay? So use the text-to-speech reader to help you read some of the stuff you need to read, okay? Okay. 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 And how much work are you doing? How much homework are you doing? I don't want to say homework. I don't want to say homework. How much? How much? What? Yeah. You need to read. That starts on the 20 seconds of labs. You need to read. You need to read, read this article today, the one I sent you, and then go to your econ course outline. Start reading everything. And once you start reading everything, what you're going to realize is you're going to get into a groove and you're going to understand the way they're communicating, the way they're talking to you. Okay, and once you reach that stage, it's going to be a lot easier to read this stuff. It's going to go a lot faster. At the beginning, it's going to be difficult, really. At the beginning, it's hard, man. It, it is what it is. You're look, you're learning something new. You have to put. The, it's not learning is not supposed to be easy, uh, and it's not, you know, it's not supposed to not necessarily come naturally right? Sometimes it's a struggle. A lot of the times it's a struggle, but it's well worth it, man. 
you're acquiring, acquiring tools that you're going to use for wherever you want to go, right? Okay. Okay, man. That's, listen, do you want to... Should we continue doing this on a regular basis? Done deal, man. Done deal. Oh, no problem, man. Uh, and for sure, do some readings. Uh, come with questions. And I'm not going to have all the answers, but I'll work with you and, you know, whatever we need to look up, we'll look up and uh, see where it takes us, okay? Okay, man. Good, good. <laughs> And do things, you get rid of some of the stuff that's been piling on. Get that stuff done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Good stuff, man. <laughs> you look good. You look good, man. You look good. Yeah, man. Okay, man. We'll talk later, okay? I like it. Bye. Okay, brother. We'll talk Sunday. Bye-bye.